Hey, my name is Tim Buell. Welcome back to part eight of Finale for Drummers. And today we're going to talk about how to work with uh, playback for drums in Finale. Now, this is going to be different than what we did a couple of installments ago in this series where I kind of exported my transcription as MIDI and then dragged it into Logic. If you want super, super, super realistic, um, good sounding playback, like you want to make your drum transcription or exercises or whatever, and then get them to sound and feel a little more realistic, my biggest suggestion is going to be export your document as MIDI, load it into your favorite DAW and use a DAW to make it sound the best. The goal of today is not really like the most realistic playback ever. It's troubleshooting some really common playback issues in Finale and just getting it to where when we play back in Finale, it sounds at least somewhat like uh, you know, a real drummer playing this stuff. So to start today, we're going to use this document we have here. Um, I've labeled it drum set playback. And all the sounds that you're going to hear today are stuff that comes with Finale when you download it. Um, if you're having a problem, just in general, you can't get any sound to come out of Finale. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have completed the installment process through the setup wizard and that you've installed the ARIA player setup wizard and the Garretin. I don't know if I'm saying that right, instruments for finale setup. That's going to be really, really important because otherwise you might not have any sounds for finale to play. But as long as you've installed finale properly, um, and if you've already installed it, you can go back, go through the setup wizard again, and make sure that you've installed those extra components. And you can even, as you're installing, take note of where they're downloaded onto your computer. You can put them in places if you know if you have an external hard drive that has a little more space. But you got to make sure that you've done that. But over in Finale, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we can see this playback bar up here. And if you can't see that, just go up to Window and go to Playback Controls. And you can see you can toggle that on and off. That's going to be the first thing that we want to do is make sure that that playback window is there. So what we have in this playback bar here is we have a couple of controls. This arrow here, the two arrows that go back in the little line, sends you all the way to the beginning of the document. Uh, this arrow rewinds or kind of takes you back a measure. This square is stop. This triangle is play. These two lines are pause. This is record, which we're not really going to get into today. Uh, this is fast forward or, you know, kind of for our purposes, it just kind of jumps a measure. Uh, this skips to the end of the document. And this shows you what measure you're currently selected on. So if you want to play back from measure seven, you can skip through here, get into that. This determines how many times repeats get taken. This shows you kind of the minute marker of where your document is. And this controls tempo. This is your tempo. And then this gear icon are playback settings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the settings, playback settings. And someone submitted a comment recently where they asked, hey, how do I play back my notation from whatever measure I want it to? A lot of people were having this issue where they'd hit play and then the document would start playing from the very beginning of the score. And that's not really what you want. So you want to make sure that you go in to this uh, playback settings. You can get to it with this little gear icon right here. And then you want to make sure that current counter setting is uh, what is selected here. If it's measure, it's always going to play from measure one. But you want to go to current counter setting. Then you hit OK. And now wherever this counter right here is set to, can use these arrows to jump by, uh, you know, a measure. Wherever this playback counter is set to, it's going to play back from there. So I'm going to start playing back from measure two because this notation legend here is actually measure one. Um, so I'm going to play back from measure two. Before I actually play anything from finale, let's actually reference my original performance so that we can have a kind of comparison of what this transcription should actually sound like in real life when a human plays it and, you know, kind of the playback we're getting in Finale. So here's the original performance with my audio as an actual drummer that recorded all of this. So that's me actually performing this 
Uh, I performed that video, recorded it as audio, mixed it, did that whole thing, and then I transcribed it, which I did in part two of this installment. Let's now hear what finale playback sounds like for this transcription. So if you're playing back stuff and you're just not hearing anything at all, one of the first things you'll want to check is go to MIDI audio up here at the top. And then I would select play finale through MIDI. That's going to be the easiest way for you to do this. If you're an advanced user and you want to get into fancy sounds and all kinds of stuff, you can play through VST. We're not going to get into that today because it gets a little... It's a little complicated and VST is often used for third-party sounds. And not all of you are going to have third-party sounds. So let's go make sure it's play finale through MIDI. And then the other thing that you want to do is you want to go down here to device setup. And let's go to audio setup. And you want to make sure that your settings mirror this. It's going to be a little different for everyone, but you want to make sure that this audio driver is set to direct sound. And you want to make sure that the source, the output, the output source is set to whatever your speakers are for your computer. So if you're having trouble kind of getting through, getting sound out, make sure that MIDI is selected in that dropdown and make sure that the audio driver and the output are all set correctly and configured. So the next thing that you might notice is let's say that, uh, let's say that yes, there's a tempo marking here of 80, but uh, I want to play it back faster. I want to see how this would sound at, uh, let's, let's get crazy. I want to see how this would sound at 200 BPM. So I put in 200 BPM right here and I can hit play. Okay, let's go back to 80. Nothing changed. That's confusing. Really what's going on here, and this can be tricky, is there's kind of like a hierarchy of where Finale's document gets its tempo. And you might be looking at this little bar here and say like, well, I'm changing the tempo here. Why isn't it changing? There's a couple of things that you want to do. Firstly, go to your selection tool, click a measure and hit Control A. That's going to highlight every measure. Right click and go to clear selected items. And then in all of these checkboxes, you want to make sure that only these four are checkmarked. Sometimes, depending on what you've done in the document and the parts you've added and the stuff you've put in, um, there can be kind of MIDI tempo information embedded in something you've put in. So you want to make sure that you clear that all out. MIDI data, make sure that tempo changes is selected. Make sure that these four are selected. Make sure that nothing else is selected. Otherwise, you're going to clear that information from the document. So go ahead, do that, hit OK. That'll just clear stuff out and make sure that you know there's nothing hiding that's changing the tempo. And then the next thing that you're going to want to do is if you've put this tempo here as an expression, which I have, if I double click this expression and go to edit and go to playback in the expression, you can see that it's a, the type of expression it is, is tempo. It's set to quarter note and it is set to the value of 80. I cannot change the tempo of the playback using this because this expression is taking priority. This expression is controlling how fast um, the document wants to play. So if I hit OK, I get out of this. If I delete this expression and now I change the tempo to 300, you can hear it's doing, it's now changing the, if I set it to 50. So now we have control of this because that expression is no longer determining the speed of the performance. But if I double click here, place this, we should be back at 80 now. So there you go. That's how you can kind of control the um, tempo of your playback and kind of some of the tricks that can trip you up if you're not totally kind of taking into account how t Finale kind of um, determines what the tempo of something is. So a common thing that you might want to change with playback is kind of the humanness of it. If you notice this tempo note here at the very beginning of the piece, it says slightly swung sixteenths. Now, normally, if you want to do swing for playback, like maybe you're doing a big man chart, you just want it to be normal eighth note swing, you can go to your playback settings here. You can select human play under human playback. You can select jazz. 
And then you can control the swing value. 100% will be totally swung, uh, and you can mess around with that. So if I go to OK, and I start from the second measure, As you can hear, it's not actually swinging the 16th notes like I want, it's just swinging the 8th notes. So Finale really only likes to swing 8th notes, and for a lot of instances, that's going to be fine. But for me, I actually want to swing these 16th notes. So here's a little trick you can do. Go to the first measure that you will need to you know, start the 16th swungness, and go to your measure tool. You can right-click the measure where you want the swung 16th to begin. Uh, and when you right click it, you're looking for time signature and then go to edit time signature. That will bring up this dialog box. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the number of beats to eight. And we're going to change it to eight. So it's now an eight, eight. And like I said, Finale really only likes to swing eighth notes. So if you change it to eight, eight, uh, it's going to start swinging the 16th note because you kind of change the meter to how you need it to be. So do that. But you don't want your sheet music to look like 8-8 eight, eight time. That's going to look a little goofy. It's going to be confusing. So once you've switched it to 8-8, eight, eight, what you can do is go to More Options. And then in this dialog box, you're going to make sure that you check Use a different time signature for display. And then you pick 4-4, four, four, which is what we want it to look like. And then right before you hit OK, make sure that you uncheck rebar music. If this is checked, uncheck it. Otherwise, when you hit OK, it's going to break all your beams and it's going to look weird. So 8-8 eight, eight time up here, more options, 4-4. Four, four. Make sure that it's use a different time signature for display and make sure that rebar music is unchecked. Hit OK. And now, if we go here, we select jazz, we go to swing values, I can play these 16th notes. And now it is really swinging the 16th note. So we're going to go to settings and we're going to swing, I, I think like 25% will be pretty good. So there you go. That's 16th swing for playback, but it'll get your playback sounding much more like you want it to. All right. So as I play this back, you'll notice something. You'll see in this notation here, I have accented snare drum notes and ghosted snare drum notes. And if you listen closely on this playback, You can hear that all of the ghost notes are actually coming out as rim shots, and I, I don't want that. Uh, I want those ghost notes to kind of sound like ghost notes. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can change the sound that a MIDI note is mapped to. Um, so let's go to Window, Score Manager, and in this Score Manager, you want to make sure that your drum set part is selected. Then you can go down here to Notation Style, go to Settings, and you can go, you see Drum Set is selected, you can go to Edit. And then up top here at Current Percussion MIDI General MIDI, you can hit New. And this shows you all of the different note heads and what their MIDI note is assigned to. So right now, if we find Snare Ghost Stroke, it is assigned to MIDI note 37. And you'll also see that Snare Cross Stick is assigned to MIDI note 37. In general MIDI, there are 127 note values, and general MIDI works by, it's just kind of assigned each note value, 1 through 127, to some kind of sound. And I believe 0 is actually a note value as well, so there are 128 sounds, maybe, if I'm remembering correctly. General MIDI has assigned, you know, it has said, okay, a normal bass drum sound is MIDI note 35, a normal kick drum sound is MIDI note 36, a normal snare drum sound is MIDI note 38. A cross stick sound is 37. So in finale, the cross stick and the ghost note are on the same space in the staff, which means for whatever reason, snare ghost stroke and cross stick have been assigned the same MIDI note, which means they're pulling the same sound, which we don't want. Um, so you could go in here and you could change the snare ghost note to a snare drum, but then you're kind of like backbeat snare drums and your ghosted snare drums sound the same. And that's not really what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this list and try to find some kind of sound that I can use as my snare ghost note. 
Um, and what I did is basically, I liked this snare drum rod sound. It's MIDI note 91. I don't ever use snare drum rod as a note head in any of the transcriptions that I do. So I can pull this MIDI note and use it for something else. So now we can go to snare ghost stroke and I can go to, what number did I say that was? 91. And I can assign this MIDI note 91, hit enter, hit okay. Hit OK again, hit select, close this. And now what we should get is for all the ghost notes in the score, we should get something that sounds a little bit more like a ghost note. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to sound a little more like a ghost note than acrostic sound would. It's not perfect. But it throws me off less than, you know, some kind of cross stick sound. Now, the last thing I'll touch on really quickly is for things like this buzz stroke here. Um, we've gotten some comments saying, how can I make that buzz stroke sound, uh, you know, like it's supposed to? You could go through, you could design a, your own note head that looks like a ghosted stroke, but you only use it for when you have a buzz stroke, and then you can do the MIDI sound and assign it. You could do all that. It's a lot of work. Again, this MIDI playback in finale, unless you get really, really, you know, tweak a ton of settings, it's never really going to sound super realistic to me. Really what it's there for is you to reference what you're inputting and making sure that it all lines up and it all works together. But if you want really realistic playback, there's just not a super easy way to make this stroke sound like a buzz stroke when finale is doing human playback. If you want to do that, again, go back a couple installments of this series and check out what I did when I exported MIDI from Finale and then imported into a DAW and used Superior Drummer to make a really realistic performance. That is going to be the method that you'll want to use if you want your notation to come to life and sound as realistic as possible. But for basic playback, that's not really what it's here for. And this video, I hope, get you started with some of the basics, some of the things that have been tripping you up, the reasons you're not getting audio, the reasons, you know, your ghost notes sound like cross sticks, things like that. This is how you can kind of get started and this should get you up and running so that you can play back. So I hope that helps. Put below in the comments any questions you might have or maybe you saw me do something and you go, hey, I actually have a different method of doing it that's easier or something like that. Put those below in the comments. We have been making videos specifically off of the responses you all have given. So those are really, really great. Don't be shy. Put stuff below in the comments. If this helped you, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you can see these as they release in your subscription feed. Uh, and that's it for this one. We'll see you in the next one.